Hello and welcome to Byte's MIRC uh, and NoName Script installation tutorial. Um, not only that, it would also be a setup to connect to QuickNet and create an account and join hopefully some IRC channels. This tutorial is meant for <coughs> the gamers out there who uh, haven't heard of MIRC and also for those who have always wanted to join I uh, MIRC or IRC and um, connect to various uh, channels to I don't know to add to pickups and uh, uh, look for matches and so on and so forth. It's like the uh, old school underground of communication. Um, IRC stands for Internet Relay Chat. It's basically just like a chat messenger, so um, MSN Messenger, ICQ, Yahoo Messenger, and so on and so forth. All of these chat messengers, Facebook Messenger, um, but this is just very old version of chatting, and uh, a lot of old gamers. Um, and veteran gamers you see using this program to uh, chat and discuss and uh, get games through the underground scene should I say. So um, this will hopefully benefit um, the players in my scene for the game I play, Team Fortress 2. Um, this may benefit other people as well who play other games. Um, obviously depending on what games you play um, will mean the, a different server you need to connect to. So for example for Team Fortress 2 we uh, associate ourselves with the QuakeNet um, whereas uh, for American TF2 they, asso they associate themselves with Game Surge so you need to connect to Game Surge to connect to their rooms but um, all of that will come apparent once you start setting up IRC and meeting people and talking to them so uh, let's get this underway so first of all what we'll do is um, I've uninstalled actually MIRC and no name script and all my uh, add-on scripts as well for no name script. So basically, I'm going to do a fresh install here just so you can see what I do. Hopefully, um, it'll be fairly straightforward and I'll be going at a good enough pace. So, um, you can download MIRC from the web, it's free. Um, you do get an annoying pop up at the start every time you launch MIRC, but you can purchase a discounted version of it for $10, I think. So, it's pretty it's worth it to be honest I have a purchase copy and that annoying uh, <coughs> box goes away eventually um, I've also done uh, I've also done a package basically which has MIRC no name script and the uh, query script which is for no name script it's quite a nice little useful script um, all in one which I'll share with you shortly so <coughs> let's just do it the, uh, the normal way which is probably where you search on Google so if we get out of here and go to Google Chrome best browser obviously um, my color scheme has appeared to die obviously because I'm doing a recording but it's all good um, so yeah uh, you need a specific type of version of MIRC to install the Nanane script unfortunately the Nanane script no longer exists in terms of being updated the developers stopped working on it I think because maybe the partners or sponsors they got uh, stopped uh, associating with them so um, you have to use a specific version to install the name script otherwise it won't install so don't try and get an update to date an up-to-date version of MIRC I think the current version is 7.22 you need to get MIRC 6.34 there are no real security flaws not many anyway and uh, not that I've noticed anyway so um, you just have to trust me on that one so um, let's type 6.34 as you can see I've already got it stored file hippo yes that is a, that is a website um, go on there And as you can see over here, there's the uh, download this version. Fairly straightforward. There's no ads. There's no spyware or anything. Um, and you can just click on download. So if you click on download, a couple of seconds, and there you can see, um, right there, MRC, um, and then. you might as well try and go download so if you go click on back and then back again and then go to and type no name script 4.22 and again you can also do file hippo and it should have it there um, and it has to be 4.22 I don't think they did an update version other than that so um, obviously file hippo doesn't actually have it so it's softpedia that's where I've downloaded it from download it from there 
Now, unfortunately, this site has a lot of dodgy captions of saying download this, download that, blah, blah, blah. But um, the real one you want to click on is is this one here. Um, so you, once you click on that, you'll get another page. You can click on US or Romania. I mean, depending on where you are, it'll be quicker, obviously, if you're towards the EU, then Romania. If you're in the US, then US. Um, click on that. And then give it a couple of seconds. And you can see it's downloading there. Well, hopefully, it's saying starting. <laughs> so let's just wait. This is the problem with uh, getting it off a obviously a website. So there's no guarantee that they'll uh, that it will work. But it has actually done it now. That's good. Um, so now you have the two most important programs. There is an additional script which I don't think is available. I can't seem to find it on the internet. It's called Qu uh, Fire Query Script, which is basically just a little no-name script to uh, add a little bit of flair and nicety to your queries when you get a query in IRC. But again, that will be explained further along. So you've downloaded these two programs. In, before I start installing these, the alternative URL you can go to to download all of these, I've uploaded it somewhere onto my server. Um, to my web space, should I say, provided by uh, Mr. Skyride himself. So if you go to uh, let's see, um, what was it? And then uh, what was it? Uh, videos, I think. Yep. And then forward slash magic dot zip. So let's just show you. That was a bit too far. There you go. So it's that URL address, adamfinley.co.uk forward slash byte forward slash widgets forward slash magic dot zip. Um, now once you click on that, you should get, as you can see I already have a one there, but it should just be called magic dot zip because I already downloaded it before. And if you open it, just remember where where you save it, and then open it, and then you get all three: MIRC 6.34, no name script 4.22, and query script, which is a uh, um, I managed to salvage it from my uh, previous downloads I've done before. So um, luckily, I've got a copy of that. Um, so I think this will probably be the easier option as opposed to just going to websites and downloading them separately. But it's up to you again. The difference is that this package has the query script; the other ones, um, the other method doesn't. So it's up to you. Um, so if we close that and uh, let's extract them somewhere so demo tutorial and let's just extract all of them so select them all drag them across to that folder and now you can see we have all three so uh, and it has to be done I believe in this order could be wrong but um, just better to do it this way that's how I've always done it double click on MIRC 6.34 run it and you get this. It does say it's a, a virus, but uh, I would I'd ignore that. It's AVG. I've got AVG antivirus. It's not a virus. It's just a. Um, it's just its rules hasn't been updated, or it have been updated and it thinks it is, but it's not. Um, over I don't know how many people use the IRC. Over a million at least, if not more, use IRC. Trust me, there's no uh, <laughs> virus uh, or trojan with it. Um, if you can agree, uh, program files, and I say, yep, that's where I want to install it. Yeah, it says I already exist because while I did, I already had it installed and I just installed it. But you won't get this pop up, so don't worry. Just continue. If you do get this pop up, just click yes anyway. Um, include all the rest, check all of them, full. You can just press on full, really. Next, um, uh, this is up to obviously your choice. But one thing I would suggest not to do is remove. The tick off this. Do not keep that checked because you should. If you update MIRC, no name scripts will no longer work. So you must uncheck it. It's very important. Um, once again, you must uncheck this box. Okay, by default it's checked. Uncheck it. Um, it's up to you what you want to do with the shortcuts. Um, I don't need any because um, no name script will create its own. Um, so click on next. Install. Installed. 
Right, do not run MIRC at this stage. Um, for those that know IRC or MIRC, it's not the most prettiest program in the world. And this is where no name script comes in, and it's a beautiful program, and it has a lot of functionality with it. So, do not run it. There's no point checking that run MIRC thing. Click on finish. That's done now. Now let's run the name script. Next, I accept. Uh, yeah, install everything, the default basically, complete or default, whichever. Yep, next, again. Yes, it will overwrite the MIRC folder, don't worry. It won't write, overwrite all the files, but it needs to apply its changes on top of MIRC. So if we do next. And yes, this is the default location where it should be, uh, obviously it'll be your users and your username of your Windows login and then update. So yep, just leave it like that. And you can see it's installing. It says, do you want to download the latest servers.ini? Yep, basically that just gets you all the latest servers available, so Game Search, Quake, Net, Freenode, and so on and so forth. Click on yes, it will download them. Now at this stage here, you could technically launch no name scripts, but we're not going to do that for now because um, um, I want to try and show you how to load this script. So that's finished now. Uh, yes, this program installed correctly, Windows 7 just being rubbish. So let's just open this and you can see I've given instructions on how to uh, where to extract the file and also how to run it. It's only a one time run, you don't have to run it every time, it's just a once. So um if you go to this is I'm on Windows 7, so if you go to my computer for in my case C uh users uh my username Kaludi as in this case um and then under where are we app data roaming and under there you see a load of programs you look for no name script right there as you can see right there no name script and now you can see the installation files from no name script now all you need to do is as you can see extract this file put it in there it already exists obviously because I had a previous version installed. You won't get this pop-up if you're new and installing it for the first time. So ignore this pop-up once again. Um, copy and replace. I shall just do it again for those who think that you know it might be different. But there you go. I deleted it. Installed it again. There we go. So once that's in, you're actually technically ready to run no name script. So I'm going to leave this readme open just because I need to load the actual name the uh, script in. So um closing all these windows right so you have now uh an icon saying launch no name script do not launch MIRC MIRC is the core program but no name script launches the core program on top of a cover program so to speak so do not launch MIRC at all which will be not in here cuz i didn't install it yep I mean I didn't install it in the start menu so that's fine so just launch no name script as you can see there now when you run it by default this is the default color and it says you're running the script for the first time now very 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 important here do not download MIRC this um, update check is from no name script so get rid of two things that you need to do um, uncheck this box and then click on later do not click on download and do not install MIRC version 2.27 so click on later and it says you're running the script for the first time please take some time to set it up I'm here to help you for that so technically now you've installed an unknown script and it doesn't look the prettiest at the moment but it looks much better than MIRC right so what we will do is uh, just go through some settings for you um, I don't you can set up an away system I don't have one so basically if you idle for two for 10 minutes say it will change your net um your name on IRC. You know, it's a bit like MSN when you uh, st stop moving the mouse. Um it would put automatically after 5 minutes put you on away. So it's the same thing. Um there's a few things I like to do. Uh what are they? So yeah, there's a uh, a few options here that it sorts out for you. I mean, you can also do um uh, put in your QuakeNet credentials because obviously this is what part of this video tutorial will be doing uh, registering a QuakeNet account and also then making it so that you don't have to type it in every time all you have to do is just put it in once so in this place you could put it in here basically your nickname and your password and um, 
it will authenticate you every time. Um, how it works is there's a queue bot in every IRC channel that you join normally and that queue bot is basically like the admin, the one that controls all the powers of saying you should be banned or not you're not able to join because you're not authenticated or or if someone spams you can kick spam you know kick them as well. So Q is called queue bot because you'll see uh, on the right hand side when he joins the channel or when he's in the channel. Um, it's provided by the Quaknet servers, so to speak. So we'll come back to that. Normally I set that, set this up here because obviously I already have a credential um, set up, but it's fine. Protections if you're opt in a channel. Now obviously <laughs> some people might not know what an op is and a and a, um, a peon is. I know it sounds quite a uh, quite hostile, but <laughs> ops is basically when you have powers to minimum at least kick people if they're not opt or even if they are opt. Um, again, I will explain more of this to detail. Um, I think the main thing we should go through now is the theme, just because yes, you the whole reason you install no name script is to make it look pretty. Now, there's loads, there's absolutely loads you can choose from. As you can see, there's so many you can choose. Whatever fancies your taste. If you are, if you like pink, then go for pink. If you like red and black, go to that, and so on and so forth. I prefer um, water. Uh, no, what? That's waste. Where's the Let's see if I can find mine. I'm, I've been using it for ages and I can't even find it. There we go, water. And I use default steady by default. So then I click on load. And then I click on edit theme. I don't think the font size is big enough. So what I end up doing is just doing this. Save. Everything gets bigger then. It's great. Theme saved. Save. Um, close. OK. Right. So here's your MIRC. Now this is MIRC looking pretty as opposed to the white background on everything and very basic icon uh, figures and structure. So, um, now you remember we installed that um, query script. Um, this is optional, it's not part of the program. You don't need to install it if you don't want to, but I like to have it because I get a lot of private messages from people um, in the TF2 community because obviously I run a lot of things. So, um, I like to give them. Uh, sort of information where I am or, or not where I am but how they can contact me if if it's urgent and so on and so forth. Um, so here you can see there's the command here. Right, so we just copy that, put that in here and you should get a pop-up saying your email address and so on and so forth. Now obviously I won't give my email address here on the video but you can put xxx at xxx.com or .co.uk whatever and so on and so forth. Um, so if I do that now, you can see it's loaded now. So whenever someone private messages me, they will see um, my email address and they can contact me via there if it's an emergency and so on and so forth. Right, so now that that script's installed, all we need to do now is configure um, the name script and MIRC. So um, let's go through some basics first that I think will help you. Um, I am going to assume that this is the setup for the TF2 community and um, we're going to try and connect to the QuakeNet server so obviously if you know another server that you'd like to connect to then connect to that instead but for the benefit of this tutorial it will be going through QuakeNet um, so first of all click on this button here MIRC options it's the second one from the left here so you get all of this, uh, these options uh, come up, so you can put whatever you want to bite, bite, that's bite.com, bite me um, away. I just put it like that because cause I don't want to be pestered so much, but I, <laughs> I still get pestered anyway. <coughs> um, excuse me, and then we can just do, um, what sometimes ha happens is you have a nickname and an alternative. Basically it can mean that A, someone's taken your nickname already, on IRC. Um, all it takes is one person on that same server to take your nickname away. Um, so try and make a unique nickname which no one will take away from you or no one will think of taking away from you. Um, at the same time you also may lose your internet connection and um, MIRC takes about five minutes for you to time out. So obviously you can't have that nickname until that what that original nickname has timed out and left the server so you have to put an alternative nickname on. You can leave invisible mode on and um, once you set that up, click on service here on the left. Now we don't want Dalnet, that's nothing to do with us whatsoever. We want QuakeNet, so double click on QuakeNet. And now I always 
find the SE, the Swedish server, is the most reliable server, so it's up to you. Click on that, click on select, um, click on options, make sure you check this box here, this one here, connect at startup. Um, so uh, enable that. Um, and we'll talk about the perform in a minute. That's a nice little thing which basically lets you auto join channels when you launch um, the name script, so you don't have to type it in every time because it's tedious. Um, you don't need to do any of these options now. A few little niceties which I will go through with you. Um, you might want to enable, so you can enable a who is on query. Basically, what that is is if when somebody sends you a private message. It will who is them, which will basically say who is this guy. It will show you what channels he's in, what's his host mask name normally, and what name he's running. So just to give you a bit of an idea, really. Um, also, auto join channel on invite and rejoin when kicked as well. If you ever get kicked from a channel just from as a joke from friends, and <laughs> and then you don't rejoin it, then obviously they might think that you've taken offence and so on and so forth. So yep, make sure you enable them. Options um, again, some pro um, personal preferences here basically because I get a load of private messages I a private message is called a query on IRC so um, I just enable this so basically what that means is the icon here at the bottom right will be flashing if I have a query that's up to you if you want that enabled sounds and requests uh, again under query I make it play an alert which comes the default package part of no name script and if you get ready to hear this sound Apologies for deafening you, but that's what basically I get every time someone sends me a private message. Obviously, it's not as loud though, thankfully, because otherwise I'd be bleeding. Um, and you can ignore all the rest. The DCC is probably the, one of the worst parts of uh, MIRC as it fails miserably. So I would ignore all of that. It's basically sending a file through IRC. It doesn't work all the time because of your routers and sophistication of firewalls and antiviruses and so on. It just doesn't work anymore. Um, and the last option that I would do is tray. Place MIRC in tray when minimized. So that's this one here. So you click on that. OK. OK. Now what that will do is basically when you click on over here, when you click on minimize, it will keep it here at the bottom right. Okay. So I don't want, I don't I don't like having it here at the bottom on a taskbar over here. So I like to have it just here. And then basically, what will happen is if I get queried, that IRC uh, icon will flash. It will, uh, it will be hidden and shown again, like every second, saying that I've got a private message, a query. So that's why I like having it there as well. You get to see it. Um, let's take a look now. So basically, we've now just set ourselves up to join QuickNet. We haven't authenticated or created our own account yet, but we have set ourselves up to join QuickNet. So, without any further ado, as you can see over here, there's the connect button right here with the on symbol, should I say? And there you can see we're connecting to QuickNet. And that's it. Um, So, now that we're connected, how do we create an account? Well, like I said, Qbot is the king of this server. So what we say is message... Uh, let's see if I can do this right. I don't know if I can. Nope, I can't. <laughs> okay, so message... Um, Q hello, I think. There you can see, right. Message Q hello. So, once you've done that, it asks you for your email address, okay? Now the reason I'll ask you for your email address, I believe, is so that you can start an account going. So, basically, um, you put in your email address here, so xxx at xxx.com, and you have to put it twice. Oh, mistyped that. Did I type that incorrectly? No. Uh, 
Oh, he didn't like my nickname. Okay. I see. As a, I think, believe the nickname already has been taken by myself. So let's try that again. There you can see. Account BM Zor one one two three one one two three created successfully. Information about how to access your how to access and use your new account will be sent to your email address of xxx at xxx.com. If you do not see an email soon, be sure to check your spam folder. Um, more, uh, more or less, it does actually go to your spam folder, so be careful, or your junk mail, should I say. So, um, yes, so basically, once you've set up your account, um, here, you can there are a few ways you can um well the first thing i would say is the fact that when you get your email address when you get your email from quakenet it will give you a alphanumeric case sensitive password um now that could be anything uh let me see if i can i have my laptop um, are on the left of me. So what I'll be doing is, because obviously for confidentiality and security reasons, I don't want to show you uh, my email address. I will um, just create a second one on the other account on the other lap on the laptop, should I say? Um, just now. So right. So if I do Nick. Mm, Just doing one now. Sending it to my Gmail address. Um, why that's happening? Let's have to try that again. I'm a mint. <laughs> right, so I have now created my test account. I'm just going to, as I've just shown you here, so you create your own test account. Um, you don't have to change your nickname. I'm guessing your nickname will be unique. If it does say change your nickname to something with none of the following characters, um, it could be because of the fact that I had a pipe in my name as well, which I didn't like. So it has to be just char simple characters being used or numbers as well. So whatever you called your name here. So obviously that was defined here. And uh, let me just show you over here. So you might want to change your name here, obviously, to. Um, I don't know what you want to call yourself, Icarus123 and then Icarus1234 and so on and so forth. So once you do that your nickname will be that. So And then you go to message, Q, hello and then your email address twice. So xxx at xxx.com, xxx at xxx.com. Okay, so um, as you can see there. Right, so while that's happening I'm just going to check my emails on the laptop. So uh, while well, you just look at that and see if you can achieve it, hopefully. I haven't confused you too much. Alright, I've logged in now. And I have, I hope, an email from Qbots. You should get an email from Qbots saying thank you for registering to get your password please visit this link so it also gives you instructions in the email of how to request your password once again if you uh, have forgotten it basically um, so to get your password you click on that link in your email it's a fairly long link and then you have to verify because they got a lot of spammers you have to verify that you uh, uh, actually uh, want the password and not just spamming them so um, if you just type in the capture message you get. Okay, so for the benefit of 
for the benefit of of the viewers who watch this, um, this is a test account. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, makes no difference to me if you try and steal the, cred steal the credentials. Um, it's a, to a Duff email address, so it's all good. Um, so first of all, obviously, you don't have to do this. Um, so don't do this following step. This is just so I can show you for testing purposes. So we have byte testing. So now my nickname is byte testing. Obviously, otherwise, it won't work. Um, so so first thing you need to this is where you now need to pay attention message queue is always forward slash message queue and then your command so I want to auth now I don't know I can't remember the auth command by default so hey, it tells you there uh, message queue at cserve.quitnet.org so what you need to do is just you need to hold your finger down by the way on the mouse and press control C and copy so that's hold your finger down from the beginning of the forward slash there and then all the way to the org and then control uh, control C once it's when it's highlighted, and then control V, as you can see there, um, to authenticate. Now you won't have to do this every time, so do do not worry about this. Um, I will tell you in the next few minutes how to authenticate automatically when you launch No Name Script. Otherwise, otherwise it'd be a pain uh, to do every time. So there's message queue at uh, C serve, and then you do auth, which basically stands for authenticate. Then your username, which in my case is byte testing, not testing. That's testing, and my, the password they've given me is six um, I P U seven four. Like I said, some alphanumeric password. Byte testing. Hopefully that will work. And as you can see, you are now logged in as byte testing. Remember, no one from QuickNet will ever ask you for your password. Never send your password to anyone except the Q at C served quicknet.org. This is correct, by the way. It's the same with Steam. They never will ask for your password ever. Um, so don't ever give your password away. It could cause some damage, especially if you're an admin of a few channels. So, um, and then you'll have to speak to the feds. Literally, they're called the feds on QuakeNet. So, um, right. So now that you've done your account, um, I'm just going to do a very quick summary of the steps I took there, just to start that again, because obviously it was a bit uh, nip and tuck. Just very quickly. So, say you've just launched. Actually, I'll just do it from scratch. Shall, shall I? So you launch name script, and because of the options we set before, as you can see, we have now connected to QuakeNet. Okay, so to create your account, you do message queue hello email address here dot here dot oh, no sorry at here dot com, and then you put the same email address twice, space between the two, and then you do that. Once you press return here. So see, it says, oh, obviously in this case it'll say somebody already has this account named Byte Testing. That's correct. That's somebody who's already registered this account. So obviously, like I said, it has to be a unique name uh, that hasn't been registered. Just like when you register on a website. Um, once you've done that, you'll get an email through to your email address that you put up there uh, in here, over here. Um, once you get that email, click on it, fill in the capture form so that you it's not spam and I don't think it's spam then you will be given your password once you get your password it's then just do message queue auth for now uh, I will show you how to put it in a name script so you don't have to do it any, all the time message queue auth then you will get this command highlight it keep your finger on it you can't let go otherwise it will stop as you can see like that you see now you'll know once it's copied if you keep your finger on it it's still white and then you copy and then it's gone and then you can see oop, I didn't copy all of it auth and then your name Byte testing is what you registered with in my case, and then the password is 6m blah 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 blah, and so on and so forth. Right now, um, before we continue with this password, because um, obviously you might want to know, you might want to try and um, change the password to something you'll remember as opposed to the alphanumeric rubbish they give you. So, um, I'm going to quickly just tell you how to. Um, excuse me, how to um, change your password to one that you'll remember. Now to do that, um, I believe it's called new pass, I could be wrong, yes that's correct, new pass. So you do the same as before, message.org, and then you say new pass in caps, and then your old password, so my old password was 6MIPU um, my PU 
74CV5. Okay, and then you have to type that in one more time as well to verify that is the correct password you. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, ignore me. <laughs> ignore me. That's your old password, then you need to put in your new password. So my new password would be something like password1. Obviously, don't create a password called password1. It would be very easy to guess. Create something very unique. I don't know, something like PAWORD76, for example. Passwords in alphanumeric hacks or characters. And then you do the same again. Um now that should oh what did I do wrong there? Oh I did message twice, my apologies. It should just be one message by the way. <laughs> Click on that. And now you can see new pass is only available to auth users, so try to authenticate with your account first. So you've got to authenticate first before you uh, before you before you are able to change your pass. So to do that, remember what we did? It was message queue auth. So let's just do that now, shall we? I thought I did auth, but obviously I forgot. Auth, byte testing, and then your password, your old password obviously hasn't changed to a new password just yet. And you can see you're now auth, uh, and then you can see this is the uh, command I put before to change the password. So it's message at q at cserve.quitnet.org, new pass, the old password, then your new password twice to verify that it's the correct one. And as you can see now, password has changed. So now, just to prove that it's changed, I will disconnect and connect again. We are now connected to QuakeNet and again message Q auth. Just copy this. Auth, your nickname that you used to register with, and then the new password I put, which I believe was capital P um A five five W O R Zero Zero R D uh, seventy six. Seventy six, yes it was. And then as you can see I have now auth, so that's my new password set up. Now you won't need to authenticate like this every time, otherwise it become very it will become very tedious. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do it fresh from scratch here just so you can see what you need to do. Launch the name script, okay? You're now connected to QuakeNet, okay? So we ignore that. What you can do is once this finishes loading, um disconnect for a minute, go to no name script here at the top, then setup. And you get this uh, thing that we had before at the start. Click on Network Services. Click on QuakeNet. Put your username in. Testing. Oh, Byte Testing. And then put your password in. So mine was capital P A five five W zero R D seventy six. Auth automatically. Make sure you check this box here. Auth automatically if connected to QuakeNet server. That is important. Otherwise, it will not run the auth command. Um, when you launch uh, no name script, click on OK. Now to prove that it works, close IRC, open it up again, and as you can see, there you have. Oh, whoops! That was a bit of a squiggly line there. There we go. You are now logged in as byte testing. Blah blah blah. So you have now created a QuakeNet account. And you're almost actually there, believe it or not. So uh, hopefully you've managed to follow through my uh, t tutorial so far. It's almost over, don't worry. Um, what's left for me to show you? Just a few little nice things uh, I'll show you once you're in a channel. But before we do that, um, there are a few channels I would love for you to join and get into the scene of Team Fortress 2 if you want to. So there was a option so if you go to connect if you sorry let me uh, explain that again if you go to options the second icon here so let's just zoom in for that one this one here click on that you get this window click on options on the left there click on perform click on this box over here this one here just so you know Enable it for all networks. Now, if you if you don't have a QuakeNet in here, click on Add, then search for QuakeNets by typing. Oh, Q. I thought, but no, obviously not. Uh, QuakeNet, QuakeNet, QuakeNet. Being very very blind at the moment. Ah. 
Oh. I see. Uh, I can't seem to find it at the moment in this list. That's great. Nope. I think it's because I already have it in the list. Uh, that could be why. So yes, you may need to add it in what if it if it's not in the drop down. Let me just check. Yeah, I think it's because it's already in the list. So what you need to do is um once you've selected QuakeNet Just get rid of those temporarily. Um, you'll need to do no, oh, it's because I have um, this enabled for now. Forward slash J, which means forward slash join, and then the room. So please, if you can just do this for me. So those are two of the most common channels in uh, the TF2 sense for QuakeNet, ETF2L and Vanilla TV. Please join those rooms. Make sure you enable this. Click on OK. OK. Now once you've done that, close IRC. Just to put, you don't have to close IRC. I'm just trying to show you from scratch how it works. You can just disconnect and connect again. So, um, As you can see, I am now joined into two channels. ETF2L, which is the biggest league for Team Fortress 2, and Vanilla TV, which is the biggest casting station in the EU for covering Team Fortress 2. Um, and as you can see now, as I was explaining to you before, these ones with the at sign on their names basically means they're opt, they're opt admins, so they're admins basically, they have the power to kick people below them as you can see the people below them are all of these people um, now these people here are with a plus on their name, uh, next to their name is called, uh, they're called peons, they basically have a voice so that if the room was moderated then they could at least talk whereas the people who don't have a plus symbol next to their name means that they couldn't talk at all. So basically if you were in a meeting and you didn't want anyone to talk you could moderate the room so that all the people who don't have a plus sign or an app sign an at sign next to their name they couldn't talk and disrupt you. That's the idea behind it. Um, so yes another few niceties I will show you. If there's someone with a really dodgy name that you can't seem to type very quickly and you want to type it quickly so for example if I want to type Skyride I just type Sky and then press tab button on your keyboard and it will auto fill it for you same goes for any name so stunt stunts um, oh I'm sorry I just pressed F12 by accident there um, if, yeah so like I said admirable click on tab and there you go so on and so forth and also if you've got commands that you want to run again or say something again because you lagged out so for example if you said hi and then this is a uh, test video tutorial and then you want to repeat hi just press the up arrow on your keyboard and you can see they'll go through the latest lines of text that you've been using two test three test four two three four five six you can see so you've basically got a history of what you typed in that channel um, what I will also do now is just go back on my laptop and authenticate with my real stuff, my real account credentials, should I say? Network services, games, and QuakeNet, automatically all. There we go. Um, just a moment. Okay, and connecting. So hopefully now. Must have disabled my perform. Just a moment. Yes, I did. Whoopsie daisy. All right. So now you should see Byte's laptop joining IRC. Hopefully, very shortly. He says. There we go. All right. So you should see me join shortly now into Vanilla TV. There you can see me. Byte, me for a uh, pipe laptop. So that's my other accounts running on my laptop. 
Um, now it will take a good minute for me to catch up with the lag because I'm trying to join 20 channels. The maximum channels you can join on IRC is 20. Um, so be wise with the rooms that you idle in. Um, another thing I forgot to mention was because I have a registered version of MIRC, when you launch no name scripts, uh, I don't get the pop up anymore saying you if you you know thank you for registering MIRC, would you like to purchase it? Blah blah blah. I don't get that pop up anymore. For those that installed it for the first time and don't have a purchase copy, you will get that pop up every time you launch no name scripts. Um, so obviously you can find your own method of how you would like to get rid of that, either through payment or through through any other means. Obviously. Um, in my case, I've paid for mine, and yeah, I, just, I don't have to have that annoying pop-up come up anymore. Um, like I said, it only comes up when you launch no-name scripts. So now that I've joined IRC, um, I'm just waiting for the lag to disappear on my laptop, so I can send myself a PM on a private message. A PM stands for private message on. Uh, on uh, this account that I'm showing you here with the video tutorial it's almost caught up now a few more seconds and right we should be good to go so let's just message byte testing now shall we hi I've just sent a message to myself saying hi now hopefully I will get the noise going beep as in very loud where it makes your ears bleed um, lag is still there few more seconds hopefully and there you go <laughs> there you go as I was saying MIRC isn't on the taskbar because it saves space for me and also it's at the bottom right I know someone's messaged me sent me a private message as you can see because first of all it makes the noise only once because otherwise it'd be annoying as hell and two it keeps on flashing until you respond and there you can see buy me laptop and there you can see Um, and uh, there we go. Um, I have no other further questions or answers <laughs> basically to this. Hopefully I've answered them all for you. Um, and uh, yes, if there's anything I've missed out, please contact me via YouTube or on IRC. Hopefully, if you connect successfully, if you need any options tweaking, let me know, and I will be uh, glad to uh, uh, help you. This has been Bytes on a video tutorial on how to set up MIRC and the name script.